How much fertilizer is too much in corn? Well, you know what? When it comes down to economics this year, you may have a different answer than you had a year ago, but yeah. we want to talk about the safety too of different fertilizers, talking about the salt load, and looking at the placement of where you're actually putting this fertilizer. Yep, and here's really our concern. There are a lot of people out there that will just take old 1034-0 liquid and they'll throw five gallons, eight gallons, even 10 gallons right in the furrow. No! And don't give it a whole lot of thought. And then they wonder why every once in a while they have a germination issue with their corn or why the corn will come up and some of the plants will start to buggy whip and it just looks like a mess out there. What's going on? What's the problem? Well, whenever you're putting a lot of fertilizer in close proximity to the seed, you're really taking a lot of risk, whether you realize it or not. You may say, you know what, I've done this for five years or 10 years, and I really haven't seen much trouble. Then all of a sudden you get a weather extreme where you get a little bit of moisture out there, but not very much. And all of a sudden the fertilizer with all that salt is gonna attract some moisture away from the seed, Yep. you could end up with some issues. Yeah, especially in the drier springs is when we see this. And I don't care if you've been putting 10 gallons of 1034 on for the last 10 years, and you say, well, I've always done it that way. Yeah, maybe you have, but how much yield have you already lost? I mean, would you notice if you had a five bushel yield loss? No. And secondly, this could be the year that we all of a sudden have a dry spring and you end up with a 50 bushel yield loss. We've seen it time after time after time. It burns, guys. And you know, we all think that, oh, having more plant food out there is great. Well, it is, but you gotta place it in the right spot. And what it all comes back to is salt. So how much salt are we willing to take in 30 inch rows on an acre if you're gonna put it in furrow? What's our limit? Well, typically we just like to see no more than five pounds of salt in the furrow on a 30 inch row of corn. With so, soybeans, so it, it can't oh, take hardly any salt. Yeah, okay, so basically that means about three gallons of 1034-0 is all you can do in furrow. That gives you about five pounds of salt. That's it, three gallons. And you know what, if you have sandier ground and you're in a very low rainfall area, maybe you need to go even less than that. But the five pound rule, I would say is pretty good in a lot of soils. Well, here's the thing, we're talking about in furrow and you say, wait a minute now, I need more, you know, 1034 or whatever I'm doing because I need more phosphorus right. or I need and more potassium or something like that, and that's fine. This is just part of a program. This isn't your whole thing. There is no way you can put enough starter fertilizer out there to do everything well, for Well, wait, whole wait, farm. wait, though. Starter is whole different than pop-up in my book. So when we talk about starter fertilizer, we're talking about fertilizer that's gonna be, let's say, two by two. Okay, so two inches down from the seed, two inches to the side. Well, now you've got some dirt to buffer that fertilizer. Now it's not as big a deal. Pop-up fertilizer is what we would call the stuff that's right in furrow. That term, starter fertilizer, gets thrown around a lot of ways. Just so you understand what we're talking about, when we say pop-up, that's in the furrow. Starter, we're talking about two by two. Okay, now once we're talking about starter and you're getting that little bit of soil as a buffer between the seed and the fertilizer, that's gonna open up a whole new window for you and you can put on a lot more gallons or a yep. lot more pounds of dry, whichever you're using, but you need to get that just a little bit away. So what we've done on our farm, we've cut back how much we're putting in the furrow to try and be careful about overloading that seed with salt and we started moving more of our fertilizer out to the side. Well, actually in some of the stuff where we're strip tilling, we're moving it not to the side, but it's directly down below where the seed will be planted and we'll put that out in the fall, eight inches below where the seed will get planted. So that's that's one way to do it too. When you've got a lot of soil there to buffer the fertilizer, you can put on lots of fertilizer. But again, if you don't have all that soil, you're putting it in a pop-up fashion, you just, you can't have much in there. And honestly, on our trials on our farm, we've done better with 1034-0, only putting a gallon on and putting some micronutrients with it than by putting three gallons or five gallons on. So we just look at our own data on our farm and say, you know, I think putting more fertilizer on is actually hurting us in some cases. Well, we get a lot of questions from people that say, oh, you guys are, are fertilizer experts and I, I don't know all that stuff. I, I don't know how to make those decisions you just have to ask some questions. And when you're trying to get some fertilizer, don't just ask how many pounds of nitrogen, how many pounds of phosphorus, how many pounds of potassium or micronutrients. Start talking about the salt and how much is safe to have close to the seed and these kind of things. So you can actually compare products because there really is a lot of difference in the products that are out on the market today. Here's one other thing I'll tell you, and this comes from our dad years ago. He said, guys, you know, if you make a mistake on the farm where you miss a few weeds, you know, you didn't use the right rate of herbicide or use the wrong herbicide or something, you know, it's probably not that big a deal. But if you make a mistake on the farm that actually hurts your crop, 
now you've got a major issue. And that's what we're concerned about, especially when fertilizer is expensive. You don't want to invest your money in fertilizer and then have it actually hurt your crop. So what we're telling you today is just be conservative with what you're doing with your fertilizer if you're putting it in furrow in a pop-up situation. That is the riskiest place to put fertilizer, yet you can get some gain out of it. We're not saying don't do it, because if you put the right amount and you have a low level of salt in there, you can actually have some yield gain and especially you can have drier corn in the fall. If you get a point or two drier corn in the fall on 200 bushel corn, that's a lot of money. Well, the big thing for me is just about every time that we put something in the furrow, we see healthier plants early in the season. And that's a big deal. You know, if you get a jump where you're one leaf ahead of the neighbor's yep. corn, you're gonna get to maturity that much quicker. Now, is that always going to end up being more yield? Not necessarily, but you know what? I'll take my gamble spending a little bit of money on some pop-up fertilizer and having a healthier plant through the early part of the season rather than taking a chance and struggling. Well, once again, we advise you to be conservative when we're talking about pop-up fertilizer in the furrow. Be really careful. Our rule is five pounds of salt per acre or less in a 30 inch row. The other thing is just make sure that whatever you're doing with fertility, you're investing your dollars correctly. You want to have a lot of fertility out there You got if you're going to raise a good crop, but you want to place it right and not have it cost you some money in the end. Well, one other thing that you want to do just right on your farm is weed control. We'll show you how to kill this tough weed later in the show.